He's amazing, isn't he? That talk was uh, the entire reason that I decided to uh, speak today. Um, so in his talk, Sir Ken Robinson speaks about um, how school kills creativity. And, um, <laughs> and he poses the question as to what can be done. Now in this current educational environment, budget cuts and red tape, any solution to this problem may seem out of reach. Now I would like to help stimulate a solution by taking a non-traditional approach to creativity, an approach that I believe follows Ken Robinson's beliefs, but is also uniquely my own. Now when students and teachers first think of creativity, they think of elective classes, such as drawing, painting, band, architecture, or culinary arts. Notice that none of these classes are among those considered the core classes or necessary for college admission. Are <laughs> Classes such as art are not short on creativity, but a lot of times the rest of the courses and the school itself are. Now why is this? I feel that this is because it is the environment in the schools that often stifles the creative process. All the classes that I mentioned before have a feeling to them that promotes creativity, a feeling that makes students want to sing, draw, or dance, even if they have no measurable skill in the area. Now, a lot of these classes have this feeling, but a lot of the other classes don't. And I feel that the way we can change this is by promoting an idea that failure is not a mistake, that there needs to be leeway to make failure and for students to have failure occur. But what is failure? Failure can be considered one of two things a student not meeting their own ideas of success, and a student not meeting the standardized ideas of success. And more often than not, when a student is considered a failure, is the la latter idea. And this is because these standards are set up by those who have no connection to the students that they're grading. It's really easy to fail a student if you have no understanding of how they learn. Brilliant students are often considered failures because they're measured up to a system that only helps a very small portion of the population. Now, I believe that educators need to promote an opposing idea of success and failure. Like I said, all those classes before had this feeling to them, this feeling that allows students leeway to make mistakes. In these classes, every step or every failure is considered part of the process. Every student is allowed to do their own thing and they're pressed to challenge their boundaries. Think about a, lighting, a photography student. They'll try many different lens speeds and lighting apertures before they figure out what's best to capture a subject. An architecture student will redesign an entire beautiful building because it's obvious that it's not a good use of space. And a culinary arts student will find out what tastes beautiful only after trying different mixtures of ingredients. Now, a few doors down from a culinary arts room may be an English class where a student gets slammed with an F on a beautifully written paper because they took a different approach to a topic that a hundred other students wrote exactly the same way. Now, in the current education system, it's very difficult for teachers to try and instill creativity in their classes because they all have to meet these standards in order for themselves, the school, and the class to be considered successful. I believe that the current education system needs to be reworked. It's stuck in a rut and that everyone needs to help change it. The current education system needs to take a look at itself school by school, classroom by classroom, and ask what isn't working. So I would like to take a quick moment to thank uh, two people who are key in this speech, Mr. Christopher McGeehan, um, who was my STEM Academy teacher. And the reason I bring this up is because for the past five weeks, I've been interning at the downtown uh, East, or the Downingtown School Area STEM Academy. And it pulls from two different schools, East and West. And the reason I bring this school up is because these teachers are in the process of trying out many different ideas. They look at their testing criteria daily and change it to help all the students there. And I feel that this is something that every other school needs to do, to follow this model. And I would also like to thank Mr. Michael Spishak, who is my public speaking teacher. He's actually here today. Um, and he taught me that uh, speaking with my hands is only a small problem, but I still shouldn't do it as much as I used to. Thank you very much.